What's going on guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another video for you guys today. It is Arsenal 2, Chelsea 1, it's the morning after the night before and all that BS is still ringing around my ears after that awful FA Cup final. I say performance, but I say more of an awful performance by the ref compared to some of the players. Before I start this video, I want to say if you guys haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. Press that bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever I release any content. And press that subscribe button because I don't want to see any red today, tomorrow or basically for the rest of the summer, especially next week because we've got Bayern Munich next. And I'm going to talk about that game and into one of these talking points because trust me this game has had huge implications on that Bayern Munich game if it wasn't hard enough it's now basically looking impossible but let's go straight into this five talking points video let's start with the first point and there's no one else I'd rather start with than Anthony Taylor the ref and do you wonder why FIFA never pick English refs for anything in FIFA World Cup competitions I don't even know if we get picked for the Euros but I wouldn't be surprised if we don't get picked for that either it's because of referees like Anthony Taylor and the standard of refereeing in English football it is a joke I was watching Nini's video before this imagine even Nini was raging after that FA Cup final I've never seen Nini angry I bet even seen him raise his voice he was fuming out of that everyone was fuming out of that result imagine a third of all FA Cup final red cards have been given by Anthony Taylor to Chelsea players imagine that and he got given two FA Cup finals the first referee I think since 1901 to be given two FA Cup finals and he couldn't even get the first one right Mount booked for being kicked when he got the ball first time play stopped for a teeny head injury when he barely even scraped Zuma's shoulder that second yellow card for Mateo Kovacic for what for absolutely nothing when it looked like it was more of a foul on Kovacic than the foul before. And this isn't even just a one game thing with Anthony Taylor. He really is just the fish and chips Tom Henning of Raybo if we're being real about it. This is the same ref that didn't send off Maguire earlier this season. Thought a Superman punch from Paolo Gazzaniga was a foul by Marcus Alonso at Spurs away. Couldn't tell a handball and an offside at the same time in their last FA Cup final in 2017 when it was what Ramsey offside and a Sanchez handball in the build up and the linesman caught both and he still overruled the decision. VAR had to call back the Son red card in the in the 2-0 win against Spurs last season as well because he didn't see that either and he didn't see the Lacelso red card challenge that even VAR ignored too and when it comes to VAR why does it even exist when Emiliano Martinez can jump out of the box and get the ball with both of his hands and his body outside the box and the referee isn't going to do anything about it when it's 12 v 10 and I will say Arsenal were, were a good team for a lot of periods of this game and honestly I think 11 v 11 it could have gone either way and that's been the same way it's been for both of our games this season when we beat them 2-1 the game are two halves Arsenal were dominant first off we were dominant second off 2-2 draw poor game management but they were down to 10 men and got a draw too and they didn't have the referee in their back pocket for this game as well it was more our fault both games here or there and could have gone either way I think the FA Cup final would have been saved but it was ruined by poor refereeing and how many games in England do we talk about poor refereeing and how many times have we talked about it in the last few seasons hell let's even talk about the last decade if we want to go that far back refereeing in English football is an absolute joke and this cup final the first one without fans and the one was trying to be breaking barriers and shit and you got another referee who makes it about themselves and ruined another cup final congratulations anti Taylor, you bold prick moving on to the next point arsenal fans trying to talk about london is red because they've won an fa cup remember three years ago when you won the fa cup you were fifth place in the league and that was a terrible season for you guys that was the first time you dropped out the top four in 16 years now if you guys had finished fifth that would have been an amazing season for you guys under Mikel Arteta. The decline of Arsenal Football Club has been one of the greatest things this decade. You guys will probably win the Community Shield and you'll probably celebrate that like you've won the Premier League as well. Congratulations on winning the FA Cup. I will say it is what it is. I'm not going to be too salty about it. I'm more fuming about the referee's performance than Arsenal's. I think Arsenal went into half-time the better team. They managed themselves a lot better going into half-time. Second half, I think a lot of Chelsea, a lot of 
things got thrown our way that we couldn't control. We're talking about the Pedro injury, Pulisic injury, that BS Kovacic red card. But Arsenal took their chances. Like people have been saying I've been too salty, so I'll come out with some truth. Arsenal took their chances. I thought defensively they were a lot more solid than us. I think they were a bit less naive than us compared to us because it was our first FA Cup final for a lot of those players. And we do have to be real, it is an inexperienced Chelsea team. I'm not going to say it's inexperienced players, but it's an inexperienced team. So we do have to take that into credit as well. But it was just poor from us and Arsenal fans talking about London being red because they've won an FA Cup like they literally didn't get slapped in the Europa League final these guys have just qualified for Europa League football off the skin of their teeth based off the FA Cup and they're now celebrating that Spurs now have to go through the qualifying rounds is this what justifies a good season to you guys if you guys want to look me dead in the eyes and tell me that this is a progressive season for you guys you man are joking and when you sign William in a few weeks we're going to be the ones laughing back at you Next point, Rudiger, just not good enough, just not good enough, it was another rash performance from him today, he didn't give the defenders around him any sort of confidence, kept putting them under increasing pressure and he just got done multiple times over, I think his game was perfectly shown by the second goal where Hector Bellerin just left him on his ass because he threw his body at another challenge without thinking first time and we need to be real with ourselves and I love the loyalty that we have to certain players and I like loyalty, there's nothing wrong with it. But if we are transitioning as a club, we need to be realistic about some of the players that we have. And some of the players should not be in a, t in a side that is challenging for titles. Let's be real about Rudiger, he shouldn't be in a team that's challenging for titles. Who else? Marcus Alonso shouldn't be in a team challenging for titles. I don't care if he won it with us in 2017. That was a masterclass from Antonio Conte putting in a new formation that no one in the league was ready for and they got exposed after a season. Marcus Alonso is good because we could play with a left wing back. If we want him starting in games, we need to be serious about our ambitions. Jorginho, I love him. I really do. And I think in the right system, he is he would be key to us. But I think Lampard's looking for a lot more in our midfielders. And I don't think Jorginho is going to be the way forward either. I thought Jorginho struggled again today. And he got done by Ceballos for most of the match. And it's annoying to even say that. But it is what it is. Hell, if you want to talk about refereeing decisions as well. And this is another decision I didn't even speak about. Christensen could have had a foul in the build-up to the second goal. I'm not even going to use that one to be salty. Because Aubameyang took that very well. It was a good finish from him straight up. But VAR never went to look back on that and I swear down if that was in a blue shirt VAR would have called that as well <laughs> moving on to the next point luck not really on our side today and our plan B got pit, got killed by outside factors that we just couldn't do anything about in between injuries fouls getting called for nothing and red cards it was hard for Lampard to really do anything first off we did start well we got the first goal and everything but Arsenal started to push forward in momentum towards the end of first half they took advantage of our high, high line and started playing hoofball and inshallah for bare periods of the first half and it worked out uh, uh, what's his name? Aspilicueta struggled a lot with the pace coming in from Maitland Niles and Aubameyang, which I'm hating to say after everything Troop said, but it is what it is. And he also got taken down for the penalty. Going into half time, the only issue that we really have is the Aspilicueta injury. But we come out at half time in a potential position to try and change the game, try and change the momentum and bring it back into Chelsea's favour. And what happens in the first couple minutes, our best attacker goes off injured best attacker goes off injured and we have to replace it with Pedro. Pedro who also comes off injured in this game as well. It's probably going to be his last game in the Chelsea shirt. Big up Pedro for all the years of support for Chelsea. But replacing Pulisic for Pedro is not the same type of player and it's also another player on the decline. And I feel like that just completely kills our plan B. The Kovacic red card and fouls getting called out of absolutely nothing when we're trying to start attacks is going to constantly be killing our plan B. And as soon as Kovacic gets sent off, Frank Lampard has to put all his cards out on the table because that second substitution for Pulisic meant, meant that the third substitution would have to be all of the players at the same time. You can only make three bands of substitutions at the same time, even though you're allowed five subs, which is why you saw three subs come on with 12 minutes to go when Kovacic was sent off and we were 2-1 down because there just wasn't really a lot we could do. We had our backs to the wall and when you got the referee who's just given us absolutely 
fuck all for most of the match. There, there's only so much you can do. And they're re I, that's why I can't really look at and blame Frank Lampard. I will say we could have switched to three in midfield a bit earlier. But here's the thing. We don't really know what we were going to do in the second half. Because within five minutes, our best attacker, the one that's most of our attack is going to be centred around. The guy that's going to be pushing the ball forward, beating bare players and trying to set up for Olivier Giroud. Who's going to be trying to play link-ups between him and Mason Mount as well. You don't really know what we're going to do at this point. That game is this frustrating thinking about because there's so many aspects that went wrong. And I can only think of it as a handful that we can blame ourselves on. We can't, we can't bet, complain about what the ref did. We can't really complain about Arsenal having better game management than us. All that we can complain about is that I will say some defenders let us down. Jorginho got done, but player to player, I still say it would have been an even match. Moving on to our final point, buying away. As if this wasn't enough of a myth before this game showed up. Now, looking at our injury list, we have gone straight from having most of our lineup fit to being back to injury FC in the space of 90 minutes. As for Laqueta is now out injured. Ruben Loftus-Cheek potentially has another Achilles injury like if we didn't get punched in the face enough yesterday. Pulisic now out injured. Gilmore out till December as we already know. Pedro out injured. Alonso suspended. Jorginho suspended. William potentially out with an injury. I don't even know what the fuck we're going to do on Saturday. I don't even know if I should even bother doing a watch along if I should even watch the match. I'll watch it out of support for the boys but bruv we're going into buying away with all of these players out mate okay, guys just let me know what you think down in the comment section below i'm not even gonna go too much into it don't forget to like and subscribe if you're a gooner watching this for a laugh you congratulations you'll never see this badge again in your life don't forget to like and subscribe up the chels